In Heartland Season 17 Episode 1, when a very pregnant Mallory arrives at the ranch with a wild horse, Amy is taken aback, Jack and Tim encounter fresh opposition, and Lou struggles against a well-known rival in her bid for re-election. Our old friends Mallory and Jake are making a comeback. Both fresh and old plot lines were shown to be developing. Naturally, we also had the family who truly embodied Heartland and contributed to the specialness of this program. So without further ado, let's get right into this episode 1 recap of Heartland Season 17. A truck pulled into the property where Amy and Logan were working with a horse at the beginning of the episode. To everyone's amazement, the first person to emerge was a very pregnant Mallory, who said she might be in labor and that she needed Amy's assistance with the horse. On the way to the hospital, Amy began to suspect that Mallory might not actually be in Hudson for the horse, Ransom, that Mallory brought to the ranch, even though it turned out to be just Braxton hiccups. Indeed, Mallory was still in need of assistance with Ransom because she and Jake were unsure of what to do with the horse. Mallory wants Amy to integrate Ransom with the wildies that live near Heartland because, after all, Ransom was formerly a ranch horse who was set free eight years ago during a windstorm and ended up joining a wild herd. The herd was recently rounded up, which is how Ransom got returned to Jake and Mallory. But as the show went on, it became evident that Ransom was essentially simply a pretext for Mallory to return to the property. Not only did Mallory feel alone in Colorado, living there alone with Jake, but she also missed the constant bustle of activity and people at the Heartland Ranch. She stated that she wanted to return to Hudson as a result. However, Mallory was also afraid of being a mother, particularly since she and Jake don't have Colorado-based friends or family to support them in raising their baby. On the other hand, Mallory came to the realization that her home is wherever Jake and their kid, Sully Jack Anderson, named after Jack of course, are after speaking with Jack, Lou, and Amy, and having the baby at her side, in the bed of T's old truck, no less. The newly formed family then departed from the heartland and returned to Colorado, their hopes for the future restored. Regarding Ransom, Amy granted Mallory's request and introduced the equine to the wild herd following a refresher education on ranch etiquette. But as soon as Amy let him go, it was obvious the horse had no interest in joining the wildies since, instead of approaching the herd, he immediately headed for the nearby cattle that were grazing. Amy was correct in her suspicion that Ransom would make a great cow horse. Furthermore, Mallory came to terms with Ransom's job as their new ranch horse after he managed to get Jake to her in time for her to give birth. I've been adoring Mallory and Jake's chemistry at Heartland throughout the past few seasons. Their current episodes are even more entertaining. It's also wonderful to see some familiar faces from the show's early seasons who haven't appeared in a long time. Speaking of horses and cattle, the new rival to Heartland beef that sprang out of nowhere accounted for a significant portion of the show. Tim saw a billboard at the beginning of Heartland Season 17 episode, one that looked a lot like the Jack advertisement that Garland Foods had back in Season 13. To the extent of being a blatant imitation of the Garland Foods commercial, the Price Family Beef, which is only available in Crown Shoppers grocery stores, was promoted on the billboard. Additionally, Tim was concerned that Nathan Price and his partnership with Crown Shoppers may force Heartland Beef out of business because, in contrast to Garland Foods, Crown Shoppers is a nationwide chain that offers everything at a bargain. However, that was not the end of Jack and Tim's issues with Price in this episode. It became evident throughout that Price posed a greater threat than at first seemed. Initially, he beat Tim and Jack in an auction for the bull they were hoping to purchase. Price's bid was dubious enough, but he also paid twice the bull's true value. Price subsequently purchased the acreage directly beneath Heartland's cattle, proving Tim's claim that Price felt a personal vendetta against Tim and Jack. You see, at the start of the show, Sam stopped by the ranch to inform Jack and Tim that he was selling off a quarter of Big River. This is the portion that borders Heartland and that Heartland bead rents from Sam in order to graze their cattle. Additionally, Sam informed Jack and Tim that the land was theirs if they made a reasonable offer to Sam because he understood how valuable that land was to them. Naturally, this news stunned Jack and Tim, but they got their ducks in a row and made Sam a good offer since they couldn't afford to lose that grazing property. Tim and Jack, however, were left without the land they sorely needed when Price made a much, much greater offer on the land that they would be unable to resist. We had anticipated this plot since Lou began hinting at the impending mayoral elections throughout the previous season. It was unexpected, though, who would be challenging Lou. Rick's husband Carl questioned him in the season 16 finale about whether Rick had notified Lou that he was running for mayor. 
Furthermore, this episode made it apparent that Lou was no longer in the dark about her new opponent, even though at that point she was still unaware of it. There was intense competition for the mayor's position, and Lou and Rick weren't getting along. Well, as far as Lou was concerned, when Rick met Lou early in the episode she was still doing her door-to-door -door campaign for re-election. He was excited to get Lou to lunch so he could catch up and show Lou his daughter's pictures. Lou, though still courteous, was not having any of it. Lou was obviously offended by Rick's choice to challenge her. Furthermore, Rick's lead in the polls didn't help. Tim and Peter advised Lou to defame Rick in her next interview with Gail Wexford. In order to gain ground in the polls, Lau had previously conducted a fruitful discussion with Wexford on Heartland Season 16 Episode 13. Lou was more ready to disparage Rick in her interview the closer the date drew, even if at initially she didn't want to do that to Rick. She went so far as to compile a list of reasons why Rick would not be a good mayor. But once Katie read the list, she asked Lou if she was really going to criticize Rick Live on the radio. Katie then told her mother that if that's what politics is all about, then it's a bad thing. And after they had a conversation and Rick brought Lou some soothing tea, since he realized how anxious his friend was over the radio appearance, Lou changed her mind. Thus, during the interview, she expressed her belief that Rick would be an excellent mayor rather than making any disparaging remarks about him. And at least, Lou was true to herself and had her friend back, even though that might wind up costing her the election. The upcoming episode's narrative indicates that the election will be featured, so it won't be long before we find out either Lou or Rick will win the mayoralty. All I can hope for is that Lou and Rick's friendship will last, whoever it may be. They may go on and possibly even strengthen their connection now that we know that Lou was upset, not because Rick chose to run for mayor, but rather because he didn't tell her sooner. As the diner's temporary manager, Peter collaborated with Katie, who continued to work as a server at Maggie's, while Lou was off advocating for re-election. Even though everything at Maggie's was going quite well, Peter appeared more interested in playing the part of the cool, laid-back boss to Katie than he did in really managing well. So much so that he was taken aback when Katie told him that some patrons were not happy because the cook and one of the other waitresses had arrived late for their shift, leaving the patrons to wait. It seems to finally hit home for Peter that he needed to take charge of managing Maggie and implement some adjustments. He then put those measures into effect, requiring the employees to utilize punch cards and giving them corporate policy books to read, with Lou's permission. Maggie's needed a different approach, but it would work in a big company, like the one Peter used to work for. And the moment her dad began the staff meeting, Katie appeared to comprehend that. She then told Peter that these adjustments would simply give the impression that he didn't trust the personnel. Peter found it somewhat irritating that Katie questioned his choices. However, Peter discovered that Katie had a flair for this kind of thing when she told him that the staff's tardiness was due to childcare concerns and that opening the diner 30 minutes later would fix that issue. Thus, Peter and Lou informed Katie that she was being promoted to assistant manager at the conclusion of Heartland Season 17 Episode 1. The majority of the episode had Katie and Peter working together, which was lovely, but it was also impressive to see how much Katie had matured. I'm also interested to see what Katie's future storylines will include as a result of that elevation. In relation to the future, Amy's romantic life, or rather, lack thereof, was also touched upon in passing in this episode. When Mallory was last at the ranch in episode 7 of season 16, she took advantage of Finn and Amy's unclear relationship state to divert her attention from her own issues. Therefore, it makes sense that she asked Amy about Finn in this episode when Amy began to inquire about Mallory's true motivation for traveling to Heartland. Mallory was informed by Amy that Finn and Christy are now blissfully married. Amy clarified that her life is already too full after Mallory threatened to utilize her matchmaking abilities to locate Amy the ideal partner because that didn't satisfy her. Even though Amy could have been right when she told Mallory that at the end of the show, Amy had told both Lou and herself that she wouldn't mind sharing her life with someone, especially in light of Jake's involvement with Mallory. It's great to think that Amy might finally begin taking dating more seriously this season. Furthermore, given that Edwin is referenced in the upcoming episode's description, and that Amy witnesses a kiss in the Season 17 teaser, presumably involving Caleb, it appears that Season 17 may be Amy's romantic season. Sam's easy sale of the quarter of his land to Tim and Jack's rival was the only aspect of this episode that I didn't fully enjoy. I know it's business, and Sam found it difficult to turn down Price's offer. 
However, I would have assumed that Sam would prefer to make a larger profit and give Tim and Jack the property they so much need to his neighbors than to cash in large and have the land go to someone else. Especially considering that when Sam decided to list the land for sale, it didn't appear that he was looking for a large profit. However, I like Amy's explanation to Logan that Sunshine, the client horse that came to Heartland over the course of working on Ransom, was actually his client horse, and that even though Sunshine was a champion team roping horse that took home numerous awards from the Calgary Stampede the previous year, she trusted Logan to work with the horse by himself.